So I had a uh, an old friend. By old, I don't mean she's old. I just mean old as in uh, double digits, way double digits. Uh, college friend, uh, let me know that you know the, the videos that I were doing was. Um, she she got me to question how I was in, in, in engaging, in that um, I should set up a premise. So I'm gonna set up the premise in honor of today being uh, PTSD Awareness Day. Uh, the whole month is uh, is a uh, PTSD awareness, but today is the official day. I think it was uh, 2010, um, and then on 2014, I think Congress made it uh, the full month of June. So um, so with that in mind, I mean. So, you know, a lot of people argue about, oh, PTSD, oh, I don't want the D, or whatever the, the thing is. If you're talking about trauma, once that, whatever trauma had, whether it's you, you know, with losing ice cream cone to you, just horrible war or sex trafficking or fire, brimstone, falling to your death, whatever, horror, like the most extreme thing in terms of that. And when I say extreme is, is everybody processes trauma differently. Whatever remains, some people have the same experience. They dissipate it like an animal should. They dissipate the trauma. They do it in a healthy way. How they do it, who knows? It's done. Other people carry it with them year after year, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, to the point of it even makes their, their, their entire pathology. So, I think the first mistake is the quantifying, qualifying of any of this stuff because ultimately trauma is trauma if it is affecting the person and then they want like so stress is invoked upon the body like there's trauma then then there's stress that is trying to process the trauma and then you you got to dissipate the stress if it doesn't get dissipated with perhaps language like hey pull up your big boy pants or rub some dirt in it or what let, i mean let, let's go real sexist what are you a girl or whatever you know 80s um 70s uh depending on who's saying it, is going to be dismissive or minimizing or not acknowledging and not that. Now, here's the problem. You take two kids, the same kid, I mean, not the same kid, two kids, you poke them with, let's say, the exact same pounds per square inch. You just poke their skin. One of them can go look at you funny and be not even bothered by it. The other person is crying hysterical. Maybe they're oversensitive, maybe they're not, whatever. That, I'm not getting to that point. I'm talking about, let's say it's genuine. Let's say they're not putting on a front. Let's say it's real. Regardless of how insane it seems, let's say it's real. How does that affect the person? And so I bring you tonight's story. I believe this is in fourth grade because I was already in third grade with that kid. I went to camp and then I saw him in, in the third grade. And I think the fourth grade was doing a joint district kind of walk in the woods. I think it was fourth grade. I'm not sure. And the reason I say that is because I don't think I was... I, timeline was, I think I was in a particularly different house. But I remember him being specifically on this trip. And we're walking through the woods. And I found this great, amazing walking stick. I mean, this, this was a cool walking stick. And say what you want. I mean, I'm 46 now, whatever. But... You know, I think for a nine-year-old, it was a pretty cool walking stick. And, you know, I think, what is that, 35 years later, you know, or maybe even more, whatever, how many ever <laughs> decades later. But it was a cool walking stick. And I knew him to be kind of like a big, a big faker, a little bit more of that kid that, like, you know, cries when it's not even really anything, but just uses that kind of manipulation or acting or whatever you want to call it. And he falls down in the, in the, in the, in the path and everybody's like, oh my God, and the counselors are there and all this stuff. This is the scenario. And I'm like, he's faking it. And everybody's buying into it. And I'm like, no, and I'm trying to tell, and everybody's, and they're showing how to make, how to put a, 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 a um, what is it, a, a, a slint? Uh, not a slint. Anyway, to, to stabilize the leg, I forgot what it's called. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll probably pick it up in a little bit, but, and then they, they stabilize the leg, they put two sticks around, and they wrap it around with, you know, yarn or whatever, you know, foliage they find, I guess. And then they 
have him get up, so he's sort of fake limping, and it's like, hey, yo, hi, give him your walking stick. And I'm like, he's faking it. Because what I don't understand is that I think they, the counselors went to him and said, hey, make believe you do this so we can show everybody what to do if, God forbid, somebody breaks or sprains an ankle in the woods. But I'm not getting it on that level. I'm just saying I just know that it's a put on and everybody else seems to be buying into it. Give him your walking stick. All right, fine. Peer pressure or not, here's the walking stick. He's hobbling along. And then suddenly before he knows it, he's like, oh, I'm cured. Releases the bandage and hurls the walking stick into the ravine. Now, clearly I still remember this. It was a pretty damn good walking stick. I don't remember any adult saying anything other than, hey man, you know, like let it go, it was just a stick. Now that is when it gets interesting to me when it comes to trauma. It was just a stick. And especially when it comes to objects and our dependence about objects. You know, I was watching Fight Club the other day and that movie talks about how, you know, like there's that line in that movie or in the book where it says uh, the things that we own eventually own us in a sense of the connection that we have to, whether it's from nostalgia or we're holding on to these objects, which create misery or create suffering and therefore trauma. And you carry it with you until it's almost like tattooed on your face. And it's interesting to me that even within PTSD Awareness Day, people are still arguing online, daring to quantify or qualify anybody else's experience. And so, because, because here's what ultimately we'll get to. If you're daring to quantify or qualify an experience, all right, so let's talk about it. Firefighter going up a fire um, staircase is worth how many 12 year old sex trafficked in the Philippines? I mean, what is that worth? How A year there, a year to the fire. Is there an exchange rate that everybody's wanting to put up? You're really going to quantify? Because here's the ultimate point. You're going to have some Beverly Hills prima donna, some Beverly Hills deputant, getting all in a hissy fit over her, how her caramel macchiata was done. And we all... Like, we, I'm sure we've all seen something of extraordinary to that level. And for that person at that moment, at that time, clearly it's fucking trauma. Maybe none of us identify with it. Maybe none of us do it. Maybe, maybe this is the first time somebody fucked things up for her. Maybe it's the first time the assistant has walked out and she's got to do this shit herself. Who the fuck knows? But when you start quantifying or qualifying or trying to rate it and trying to tell somebody else, don't have yours, here's mine, you think you've got troubles, all right, We, if you want to play that game, then really play that game. If you're going to dare to say somebody, if you think, I guarantee you will find somebody that will fucking say the same shit to you. And if you know of a person that like, is the peak of like all the misery of the world, I think that person came around about 2,000 years ago and they put him up on a cross. He took it, supposedly, or whatever. I don't even want to get into that context, but that's somebody there. Joan of Arc, dying, getting burned at the stake. Fuck you with your trauma. You know, we can play that game. We can go there. But you're starting quantifying. Why are you quantifying? For yourself, for your, to feel better about it? Or are you processing your shit? Because I'm still hanging on to that stupid fourth grade freaking walking stick. I mean, it's, it's a story now. It's a parable just indicating how long something goes in there and the ability to, for my intuition to say he's faking it, but nobody's buying into it, but I'm not understanding on that layer. And that's the lesson I learned. And who knows? Nobody probably remembers any of that stuff because it's not to them. And God knows how I've ignored people or done something or who the hell knows what that somebody remembers of me. And I, that's my first amend is I don't know what I've done. If somebody out there is holding on to some memory that I'm involved with that is still fucking them up to this day, I'm sorry. I don't know what I can do about it other than explain what, my, what I think my pathology at the time was at that time. That's the only thing that I've gotten better about personally is just 
trying to be accountable in the immediacy of it all, right? But nonetheless, I mean, you know, there's a plenty of adults for, I mean, how many, how many teachers you got going around there dismissing, you know, fourth graders, third graders, kindergartners. Now, maybe you're dismissing it because, oh, no, nothing happened. You want them to be brave. Like you want to give the child a the comfort. They fall down. They scrape their knee. They start crying. Everything's okay. Don't worry about it. But that trauma stress has been processed. That, that is it dissipating. There's a cry. There's a shaking. There's a, uh, 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 and the thing goes the fuck away. And it's done. Lived another day. But if you keep brushing it off, if you keep avoiding it, if you keep not doing it, well, the check is going to get cashed at some point. It does. And then you end up with a story that's tattooed on your face for the next 30-something plus years. Thank you for listening.